Welcome to the town of Perth, everyone. Check out that sign behind the back. Future site, this property of passive townhomes. There's gonna to be six townhomes put on this property. If you have any questions, contact us. We'll, we'll give you more information. Next, we have our Casa Vina model in the background as well. There's two bedrooms in here. There's also a second floor apartment. Really, everything you can do inside a nice compact design. Let's go inside, check it out. Before we go inside, there's a nice little sunroom enclosure outside here of this door. There's two front doors to this place. One door goes up to the second level. This door walks into the main level. But the owners wanted to put this sunroom enclosure because this house, quite a lot of glass facing the southwesterly direction. So orientation is a consideration for design on any property. This property in particular, the corner of the building faces due south. So effectively, we have one wall that facing southeast, this wall facing southwest. Because it is southwest, there's a lot more incoming solar gain potential in the summertime for causing overheating, unnecessary overheating in the home. So that was the intent of this sunroom, provide, provide ultimately a break for that intense sun and instead have a nice sunroom at the same time, a home for plants, a home for guests, you know, really op lots of opportunity here. Interior of the Casa Vina, welcome. Okay, so being on the most Southern wall of the building or the Southern side of the building, this is where the living spaces, the main living spaces are because predominantly most of the windows in the home, most passive homes are naturally going to be contained on this Southern area. So it's where the living spaces are, living room, dining room, kitchen area, you know, very important for any comfortable, smallish passive home to have these three room spaces connected because they really do take a small space and make you feel like you're in a much larger space. Including the kitchen with the living and the dining area, there's approximately 330 square feet in here. So you can really do a lot in a small space. At the back of this main floor, we have the master bedroom here on the left. The master bedroom is approximately 120 square feet, 11 by 11. One thing to highlight in here, even though, you know, this room is a very good size, you could have a queen size bed, a king size bed in here, only 120 square feet, but all sleeping options. Outside the bedroom, we have a full washroom. This washroom has a four foot vanity, three foot space for the toilet. There's a tub shower combination in here. Beautiful, comfortable, large washroom, even though it's a compact floor plan. And at the back of the main floor, we have the main closet for the building. And there's also a door here that leads out onto a back patio. Okay, let's go up to the second floor. Right at the top of the second floor on our right, we have a second bedroom. It is set up as an office space, but this would be the second bedroom if this wasn't an office. It's a huge room. It's about 12 by 12, 150 square feet in here. It's got a nice slope ceiling too, so it really makes it feel a lot larger than it is. Could be a larger master bedroom as well. What's cool about this room is it leads out onto a back patio. Okay, second floor balcony. You know, this second floor balcony is a great interesting design feature for a number of reasons. Number one, it provides opportunity for a great outdoor living area that a small property otherwise would not provide. This balcony is also more cost effective to build, more affordable. On a cost per square foot basis, much better to build a second floor balcony rather than put it on the ground because effectively this balcony removes the cost of the foundation. Ultimately, the roof is the foundation, so it eliminates the cost for a foundation that would be required if this deck area was on the ground. Check this out. This can be in any house. Tiny home, large home, compact design. In this space right now, believe it or not, 200 square feet. Look at this kitchen. Oh my God, the counter space, the 
cabinet space. You know, a couple could live up here very comfortably. Huge kitchen. It's set up as a bachelor apartment. This bed here, obviously in the living space. This bed could easily be a wall-mounted Murphy bed, but tons of opportunity for anyone to have a rental income by simply integrating a 200 square foot one bedroom apartment to your design. There's also obviously a secondary full washroom for the apartment on this level. You know, there's 1500 square feet total in this house. There's about 600 square feet on the second floor, 900 square feet on the main floor. Compact design with all this opportunity, you know, get creative with your space. That's the great thing about designing and building your own passive home. All right, let's go into what's always my favorite part of the home, the utility room. So in here, opposite the kitchen, we have the utility space. All the utilities on this side of this room. So we have a radiant floor system for main floor heating. We have a combo max boiler system, which is effectively a double boiler water heater. One of those boilers is used for the main floor hydronic heating system. The other boiler is used as the domestic hot water system. Up top here, we have the Minute Air ERV system, which also has an integrated heat pump that acts as an air conditioner in this house. So this Minute Air can provide up to one ton of cooling, which is ample air conditioning for this model. It also takes care of all the fresh air requirements. It's also a dehumidifier. So a lot of people really love this machine in areas where there's hot, humid conditions year round. The machine operates as a dehumidifier, also as an air conditioner. It's also able to be used as a heat pump, secondary heating system down to minus five degrees Celsius. Also in the background, you can see electric panel, electric service coming in there, supplying all the electricity for the passive home, passive house, only electricity is the only utility that's required, no gas, one single utility bill, which is part of the reason passive homes are very affordable to live in. All right, folks, there you have it, the Casavina model. 1,500 square feet of affordable, compact but comfortable living, two full bedrooms, two full washrooms, plus an entire second apartment for additional rental income, you know, all living and entertaining possibilities in there.